It's actually quite exciting uh, for us to be here this afternoon uh, in kicking off this partnership to result in a, a groundbreaking uh, localization platform. Uh, as Shivani said, uh, uh, think of it as, as a Tinder for localization. And uh, to give you guys some background, our relationship with the IFC um, as a major funder of industrial projects uh, has come some way from, I suppose, early uh, coffee brainstorming type discussions uh, to where we are now. <coughs> but in effect, uh, to, to those of us who've been working in the space of localization and other um, economic uh, impacts that we try to derive through the auto sector, uh, this exactly describes the kind of creative approach needed uh, to help move the needle in SA's uh, quest for greater localization uh, in, the, in the auto's value chain. Uh, I think we all know localization makes sense. Uh, I, I recognize my colleague uh, Matomi from the DTIC. Uh, I can't tell you how many times uh, we in discussions with the DTIC and it's always a push. How do we get more localization uh, out of the sector? Um, but that doesn't mean that it's easy to do so. To say the word localization, quite simple, to unlock it, a little more challenging especially when, when we are situated as part of uh, a really competitive uh, uh, global value chain. Um, this particular project is well placed to contribute positively to the localization ecosystem. By virtue of its wide base of representation um, of approximately 150 uh, manufacturing brands in South Africa, as well as a far-reaching and influential base of uh, stakeholder partnerships. Uh, a platform hosted through NACAM uh, is a natural fit in trying to resolve some of the identification and information bottlenecks that are inherent in a system that has over years grown used to a level of uh, import penetration. And then of course having the advantage of the IFC as a partner, uh, being a large global funder, uh, to be on hand to fund some of the opportunities that, uh, uh, that come out of this platform is, is obvious. Uh, to that extent, I think it's fair for me to say that NACAM and its members, the myriad of companies that produce components for both export and domestic vehicle production, are heeding the call to, to grow both localization uh, to their OEM customers but also finding deeper localization opportunities within uh, our own value chains. Uh, this, in some extent, may help de-risk uh, uh, supplier production lines by having more sub-suppliers on their doorsteps uh, and also integrated into their production systems. More importantly, and I think something we're all looking forward to, is this could possibly lead to the creation of uh, other big brand names, um, uh, new entrant opportunities, maybe the new Met A or, or Cup Automotive. And if I have to go through all of my Nokia members, it's going to be a long time here. But these are two large listed companies, homegrown out of South Africa. I think that's the kind of growth we hope to see emerging out of this whole discussion around uh, driving localization. Uh, if something comes out of that, then uh, I suppose just reward for, for what we're trying to do with the project. Um, so let me wrap up quickly, uh, a note of appreciation, Kevin, uh, Kobe and, and team, uh, as well as to, as Shivani said, the NACAM colleagues um, who've worked quite hard to uh, not only get us to this event, but the actual substance behind the partnership. And I truly hope that um, your reward will be uh, many swipe rights. We're eager to support the automotive sector because it is one of the biggest employers in South Africa at over 100,000 direct and jobs. It also has a big contribution to South Africa's GDP. And interestingly, the automotive sector also supports transformation. And as you know, this is a big part of the South African uh, economy. And therefore, anything we can do to support transformation and impact and creating new jobs and supporting exports and manufacturing is something we're very keen to do in this country. Our support will provide both grant funding 
as well as advisory services. What we'd like to do is have a matchmaking program where original equipment manufacturers and tier one company manufacturers are better able to work with tier two and tier three company manufacturers. And so our support will enable a matchmaking process where both these groups can come together. It will involve potential investment as well, where providing things like skills development or providing upgrading of factories for tier two and tier three manufacturers so they're better able to meet the needs and demands of OEMs and tier one manufacturers. I think this collaboration with, uh, between NACAM and IFC helps in closing really the loop um, that has been missing in ensuring that there's a platform for black-owned entrepreneurs who uh, currently have been having certain barriers to enter into the sector. And I think the platform will allow that both the OEMs as well as the tier ones are able to integrate nicely for and be visible towards uh, their, their potential uh, customers. There's always been a greater need for uh, some kind of a database, but a well-qualified database where you're able to uh, sort of uh, vet and, and, and get up-to-date information from all the black-owned companies so that they can be visible uh, towards the OEMs. Because the core business of both OEMs and Tier 1s really is to make cars and build cars or supply com products and services. So it's, it's important that I think there is a platform that sort of creates a channel towards integrating between the companies that wants to enter the market. Data is data. It's important that whether it works or not, um, I meaning companies that are able to be selected to be part of the funnel or not, uh, we are able to assess and then use that as a base to build a pipeline of entrepreneurs that we can develop as a gap uh, analysis here. I think there's different criteria depending on whether the, the, the potential customer is the OEM or is the tier one, but I think ultimately they set the bands and it depends on and varies on commodities uh, and so on. So I think uh, to a greater point, it may be standards that are required um, or it may be a, a type of an experience that you need um, and so on, but you don't really have to be from the sector to, to really be in the platform. I think it's really finding companies that are technically inclined uh, that can be easily integratable into the sector.